It's the latest and unmissable addition to London's skyline. Standing at more than a thousand feet high, the Shard will be officially unveiled at a ceremony tonight. While the outside is complete, work continues to transform the inside into offices, restaurants and a luxury hotel, topped with not one but 10 50 million pound penthouse suites well let's join alex bushel uh, who has i can see quite a good vantage point alex i certainly do well, we've all been watching the shard grow reaching higher and higher over the last 12 years and today it was finally completed it is the tallest building in western europe it has this distinctive outline and it seems wherever you are you can see it Conceived of during the boom, built during the recession. The fact that over 12 years the Shard has been constructed at all is an achievement. But is it a monument to mismanaged markets or a beacon to London's towering ambition as a global city? For the architect behind it, just as important is how the Shard will draw investment south of the river. London needed a kind of um, rebalancing energy. And the idea to make this building here across the river, not on the same side of the river on, with the, the city, was part of this. So he hopes 12,000 local jobs will be created. Shops, offices and apartments will fill its 95 storeys. And from the top, you'll be able to see up to 40 miles away. When these viewing levels are open to the public in the spring of next year, we'll all be able to take in the view at a fee, of course. There's no doubting that these views are breathtaking. The question is, will the price be as well? Well, it will cost just under £25 for an adult, 19 for a child, making it the most expensive attraction of its kind in London, 50% more expensive than the Eye. Across the Channel and the Eiffel Tower is even less, £40 for a family of four compared to £88 for the Shard. But for this architecture critic, its political message is just as important as its height. They call it a vertical city and it's got lots of things in it, but right at the very top there are the apartments for the offshore multi-billionaires. They're now presiding over all of us. They're up there looking down over all of us and when you see, catch a glimpse of this building from uh, out in Dulwich or Deptford or somewhere like that, then you know they're looking at you almost. Others worry too about its effect on the local area. Russell Gray has lived in Bermondsey for the last 25 years. This heralds an opportunity for them to bring the steel and glass on the north side of the railway line to us deprived folk on the south, whereas in fact the local sentiment is much more directed towards trying to preserve the character of independence and historic variety that uh, you see around you. But the developers say London has always enjoyed new buildings next to old, and the Shard is no different. Above all, they want this building to represent progress, with a new London Bridge quarter and the Shard at its centre. Well, what about the occupancy levels? They do have a lot of floors to fill. Well, I was speaking to the developer. He said they will fill it by 2014. He says, don't worry about the recession. It is a European recession. London is a global city. That is a global building. He has a lot of confidence because he's got backers with deep pockets. The Qatari government have already paid £1.5 billion to build this building, but they might need to spend a little more because everything about the Shard is on a vast scale. Yes, the profits, but the losses too, if they don't succeed. Thank you.